Vitrum Flexile was made by a highly accomplished glassmaker in the first century AD. Vitrum Flexile, unlike conventional glass, cannot be broken. The glassmaker presenting his discovery to Emperor Tiberius is described in written records of this excellent glass. It didn't break when the emperor dropped it on the floor. The Romans were afraid that the material would devalue silver and gold. So the glassmaker was executed before he could even reveal his process in making that glass to the rest of the world. Attempts have been made, but current technology has yet to replicate the Roman shock-resistant glass. Jan Sloot created a groundbreaking data compression technology in the early 1990s, claiming to compress a 10 gigabyte movie down to just 8 kilobytes without sacrificing quality. Many people question Sloot's invention's viability, but Philips, a technology corporation, recognized real promise in his coding scheme and arranged to strike a deal with him. Sloot died of a heart attack the day before he was supposed to sign. After Sloot's death, Philips was still planning to use his invention. But a vital floppy disk containing the coding program had gone missing. The floppy disk was never recovered. And after months of searching, Sloot's idea was forgotten. In 1900, an ancient analog computer was recovered from the wreck of a trading ship that sank in the first half of the first century BCE near the island of Antikythera in the Mediterranean Sea. The Antikythera mechanism was regarded as the world's oldest calculator. Scientists have been perplexed about the mechanism's function for decades. They have been attempting to determine what it is. The widespread consensus is that it's some sort of ancient Greek computer. It's a highly remarkable invention built 1600 years ahead of its time in craftsmanship. It is the first known set of scientific dials or scales. It was also reportedly used to chart the sun, moon, and planet's positions. The mechanism's technology was so complex that it would take another 1500 years for a clock of comparable complexity to be produced in Europe. That is why, until today, it remains a mystery how such a complicated computer could have been built nearly 2000 years ago. The remnants of this ancient computer can now be seen at Athens National Archaeological Museum. A mighty steel sword was created between the 12th and 18th century in the Middle East. Legends say that it can slice through other metals. It is called the Damascus Sword. It has a remarkable strength due to ancient nanotechnology, providing unrivaled sharpness and durability. The unique pattern intrinsic to all Damascus steel blades is simple to spot. The patterns are one of a kind and mimic flowing water. The steel is also highly robust, making it shatter resistant. It can maintain a sharp edge for far longer than regular steel. However, when the unique elements used to make the blade started to run out, they couldn't replicate the quality of the blade with substitute properties. The secret procedure for forging these renowned swords was gone forever as the manufacture of Damascus steel declined. In the 17th century, the method of producing Damascus steel was forgotten, though some current metallurgists claim they may have sorted how to create it already. The Cloudbuster was invented by an Austrian psychologist, Wilhelm Reich, in the 1950s. Cloudbuster's function was founded on Reich's conception of the human libido as universal energy present in all living and organic matter, whose radiation he dubbed orgone, a neologism combining orgasm and organism. It worked by directing a system of water-powered metal tubes at the sky to manipulate orgone energy a cosmic life force that will apparently control the environment. Reich stunned critics in 1953 when his invention allegedly caused rain to fall over a field, putting an end to drought. The cynics became intrigued all of a sudden. After Reich attempted to export his orgon accumulators, the FDA destroyed all of Reich's work and imprisoned him, fearing that Reich's cloud buster could cause dangerous climate manipulation. Mithridates VI, king of Pontus on the Black Sea's southern bank, devised one of antiquity's most famous antidotes. He synthesized many antidotes to generate a single universal one, which he hoped would protect him against any poison by experimenting with different formulas and testing them on condemned criminals. The Mithridatium treatment provides him protection against spiders, snakes, scorpions, and other dangerous poisons. Celsus reported the formula a hundred years after Mithridates' death, which consisted of 36 ingredients, 
all of which were obtained from plants aside from honey, to combine them and castor to intensify the fragrance. Following the king's death, people began transcribing the antidote's recipe into numerous languages in the hopes of treating and protecting themselves. However, each translation altered the recipe, decreasing the treatment's overall effectiveness until the antidote's actual powers were completely lost. Greek fire was invented by an architect named Calnicus of Heliopolis in 672 AD. Greek fire was a maritime combat weapon used by the Byzantine Empire. The flames from these naval flamethrowers could even burn through water, allowing them to set opposing ships ablaze. It was regarded as a powerful weapon because it can continue burning even if submerged in water. The Greeks kept their liquid fire recipe top secret to stop enemies from stealing their weapons. Napalm is the closest modern-day weapon comparable to Greek fire, a flammable chemical employed in the Vietnam War. However, their actual mixture remains a mystery. The main ingredient is assumed to have been naphtha or petroleum, with sulfur or pitch and other elements added later. It's unclear how it was ignited, although quicklime was most likely used as a last-minute addition to the primary ingredients. After witnessing an airplane burst into flames in the 1980s, an amateur scientist named Maurice Ward developed an unbreakable, heat-resistant plastic called Starlight. Experiments revealed that Starlight could resist 10,000 degrees Celsius and blast 75 times stronger than the Hiroshima bomb. Starlight's astronautical and security potential was lauded by NASA, but Maurice refused to share his recipe for fear of companies profiting from his discovery. Maurice died in 2011 without passing on his secret formula, and scientists have tried and failed to duplicate this incredible substance. Nikola Tesla, an inventor and engineer, developed a game-changing invention in 1934 that would shield entire countries from aerial bombardment and military attacks. Tesla's theory allegedly claimed to disintegrate planes from 250 miles away using a charged particle beam transmitter piqued the Soviet Union's curiosity. Tesla's Teleforce, on the other hand, was never built due to a lack of funds. Tesla's idea for the death ray inexplicably vanished after his death. The Pentagon is thought to have taken them to prevent other countries from developing the technology. 17th century Italy was home to some of the most outstanding violins in the world. Antonio Stradivari and his family were master craftsmen who created string instruments with unrivaled sound quality. His creation is a symbol of an instrument that has stood the test of time. He created almost 1,000 violins, violas, and cellos, and 650 are still in existence. These instruments are famous for the quality of sound they produce. Stradivari's secret technique was passed down to his sons, but they died before passing it on to their children. Today, Stradivari's violins sell for millions of dollars at auction, with one selling for a record-breaking $15 million in 2011. Nevertheless, here we have witnessed that the history of technology is primarily a history of ideas. And ideas are virtually indestructible, even in the face of terrible record-keeping. I hope you learned something, and if you want to see more of this, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.